Ray Springs was a community tucked way down deep inside these old trees. Now what's left of it are hidden underneath these waters where if you dive down, what you find might surprise you. From an old schoolhouse to a hotel, even a community that at one time called this area home. Way back in the middle of the woods in Ray County, Tennessee, you will find a park, a cemetery, and a beautiful view of the water. Now their spirits are there, so to speak. Uh, you wonder exactly what life was like, even though you have a picture of it. Under the Piney River are the remains of a small community. Ray Springs was once the home to a lavish resort, a schoolhouse, and many, many residents who lived and worked there for dozens of years. These are were people's lives, and you just wonder a whole community gone. Ray County historian Pat Guffey is writing a book on the history of Ray Springs. She has spent countless hours learning more about a community that once existed under this massive body of water. Wonderful resort um, for people all over the United States. People came from everywhere to stay there, and they would spend weeks at a time. Picture after picture show a resort a post office, a school, a church, even families in front of massive homes in the community. You wonder, well, what did they wear to the dance? Who did they go with and things like that? Oh, what did they cook for dinner? It might be hard to imagine such a successful town now under a river with only pieces of this community left today. With this old school, you can see some of the concrete uh, and some of the, the uh, area where the building was. This is all visible when the water is down during the winter months from Ray Springs Park, the former site of Ray Springs. So why is this town underwater? You might call it progress. When TVA was building the dam, that, that was the changing point. That was the beginning of the end. End of an era and the beginning of the construction of the Watts Barn Dam, TVA acquired the community. It's almost hard to imagine a community with a post office, a church, and a cemetery. Now all that's left of the town is the old cemetery and this rusty water tank. So people came from everywhere to be healed. You might call it a legend, but hundreds flocked to Ray Springs to drink the mineral water and to bathe. Curing all kinds of diseases from the liver, stomach, and even your kidneys. Many believed it was the fountain of health. Reports show in 1878 there was a widespread epidemic of yellow fever in Chattanooga. Many escaped to Ray Springs to dodge the disease. As the spring became popular, so did the Sulphur or Ray Springs community. A church, school, and post office all sprang up. As Ray County historian Pat Guffey tells us, so did dozens of homes in this small little town. People had harness shops, there were saloons, there were hotels. Oh, it, it was a, a fine place. A place many flocked to from around the world to experience. Uh, they had dances, they had shops, all kinds of merchandise. This is a map hand drawn by Owen Wasson who at one time lived in Ray Springs many years ago. He drew this map in 1878. Today, there are few people still living who remember growing up in this remote section of Ray County. He remembers when they cut all the trees down and backed the water up. He was five and he remembers that and remembers having to move. Dot Harrison says her husband was born in Ray Springs and spent the first five years of his life in the community. We have pictures that are really free of the old hotel and the school and everything. Pictures from the past, now just a memory with only a shell remaining. It's like with this old school, you can see some of the concrete uh, and some of the, the uh, area where the building was. An old cemetery lies up a dirt road and looks down on what at one time was a busy community that's now underwater. The headstones are a reminder of the men, women, and children that once called Ray Springs home. The writing on the tombstones is faded now, some even destroyed by fallen trees. A moment in time now past, but never forgotten. Hopefully, the memory can be preserved. Pat Guffey has written numerous articles about the history of Ray Springs. She also introduced us to the memorial in Spring City. 
On the monument, the names of dozens of Ray Springs residents built piece by piece with marble and granite columns from the Ray Springs Spring House, stone from a mill and blocks or foundation from the Ray Springs school building that was built so many years ago. When hundreds of Ray Springs residents learned that their land was being taken over by TVA, it was the beginning of the end. Virginia and Donald Reed, Tom and Vanjie Garrison Engel, Joseph and Margaret Peters, the list goes on and on. All residents of a community with a church, school, and even a post office that is now under this body of water. Now the land was acquired by working with the individuals there as part of the TVA Act. And what TVA did is identify the area that would be flooded and then worked with those families. To be exact, 800 Ray Springs families all received a letter just like this one dated August 1st, 1936. Dear Sir, it is possible that the Tennessee Valley Authority will need to acquire your land. The beginning of progress for TVA and the end of an era for this small community. People started finding, having to find new places to live. Some moved to Spring City, some moved to Dayton. TVA was created in 1933. Officials say in 1936, a river management plan was constructed. Part of that plan included nine dams across the Tennessee Valley. Watts Bar Dam was one of those, and that construction started in 1939 and lasted until 1942. According to these documents, Ray Springs landowners surrendered possession of the property by December 31st, 1938. Most of those families stayed there in the area around Spring City. Uh, about 15% of them uh, actually left and went different parts of the state of Tennessee and about 5% actually left the area altogether. That meant removing all their homes, buildings and fences. Uh, dismantled homes or they just sold out and left unless they helped during the construction of the dam. It was about 800 families that were affected. Uh, during construction, about 100 families actually moved back into their homes and were part of the construction. In 1942, when the progress was completed, the water rose and the rest is history. The spring, hotel, schoolhouse, post office, and numerous stores are gone, but not forgotten. Today, a small park looks over the Piney River and the memories from the past, a reminder of what lies beneath. So could this ever happen again here in the Tennessee Valley? All in the name of progress. It, TVA has built out the, the dam system. Uh, it depends on what happens in, in the future, uh, electrical growth needs, uh, flood needs, uh, navigation needs. They believe anything is possible, but highly unlikely. Communities like Ray Springs could one day be lost to the currents of time. If you would like to check out the remains of Ray Springs, the park is open to the public this weekend. And if you'd like to read more information, all you have to do is go to our website. That's WDEF.com.